Hi, I'm Kathleen. So if you don't mind, I'll wait just a little bit more before I continue to give others the chance to join as well. Hello, Terry. How are you today? Okay. So today we take a break from watercolor because for the past few lives I did watercolor, I think, yeah. So now let's do some sketching. Okay. So drawing the face generally is already quite challenge. But especially so the eyes, right? Eyes are just the one thing that you have to really get right. Otherwise, the whole the whole face or, you know, especially if it's a portrait and it's supposed to look like the person you're drawing, you really have to get the eyes right. So whenever I do portraits, besides the general shape of the face, I, I try to get the general shape of the face first, but the very first feature that I work on um, are the eyes because um, if I don't get it right, then I have to, you know, scrap it or start over. The eyes really um, make a huge difference to portraiture. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining. Okay, so today we'll just tackle because, of course, like the face, the eye will change depending on the angle, right? So that's why it's specifically how to draw simple eyes. So just um, straightforward. And we will start with one eye because basically you're just going to flip it to the other side. But we will go through the step by step of how we can how we can break it down, how we can simplify it so that, um, you know, you can use it forever for different kinds of eyes. Basically inside, we all have the same structure. We have the, the eyeball, the irises, okay? only the outer parts um, change okay so I think we can start all right so if you're looking to draw the whole face um, I actually um, wrote an article about that before um, on our website so you can also check that out um, it's uh, how to draw a basic face and there's also an article that I created where you um, it where it tells helps you or gives you a step-by-step -step of how to draw an angled face. So an angled face from, from just um, a level, an angled face um, looking downwards, an, arrow, an, an angled face um, with a tilted head. So um, you can all find this in, in our websites and our supplies under toolkits. So we have several um, sketching articles out already. Okay. So um, basically, I will just use um, two pencils. I will use an HB and a 6B. So in school, um, we were um, taught to use just one 6B because it will help you um, learn the control to control your pencil, to control how much pressure you exert, which will make a huge difference when you're shading. And to make a beautiful eye, you really have to do a lot of shading. Okay, so I'm preparing you already. All right, so now I'm going to um, flip down and I'm going to show my desk. Okay, let's see. Okay, and I'm going to flip it around. All right, so now let me move this forward. Okay, there you go. So this is what I, um, the portrait that I was talking about earlier that I did before, the how to draw a basic um portrait and then I also did a, um, how to draw an angled face so you can check it out there but today we're going for um, how to draw simple eyes or let's start with one eye okay so let's see so the good thing about um, drawing eyes is you can use your own eye as your reference or you can look online um, I usually get from Pixabay because um, it gives you, it offers you, they offer you um, free reference photos. Okay, so copyright free 
you don't have to worry about you know uh, people suing you so I already saved one photo let me just um, get that just for your own reference okay so here it is so this is um, a good example of an eye usually when I get the reference I, I like to choose the one with with um, contrast with shadows um, so I like this. This one is good. We don't have to follow it, but it's good to have it as a reference. We don't have to do the exact shape and everything, but the general look, like how does it look like um, on this side, here, the shadowing, things like that. Okay, so today we're not aiming to copy exactly, but really to get the general look of the eye. Okay, so my thing is, okay, so I'll start with, with the basic. Okay, let's go to, if you don't mind, I'll start with digital so you can see it better. Okay, and let me just zoom in a bit. Or I mean, zoom in a lot so you can really see closer. Okay, so here is um, how I would start. Okay. So, I would start with the shape of the eye. So, of course, people have different eye shapes, so it depends on which person you're drawing. But for now, let's stick with the almond shape. Okay, so uh, you would draw the upper part first. Okay, let me just increase this. Okay, so you do this upper part first, like so. And then the lower part. Okay, so remember when you do this, you do it lightly because these are all just guidelines so these are all just really rough sketches that you need to do okay so let me do that again so remember your upper part is usually bigger longer line than the lower line okay so the upper line is longer than the lower and you have to get this part here there's this like duck where the duck will be okay so it's not like that okay the shape is curving and then there's a little curve like so okay so you can see it when you look at your eye okay so always have your mirror and use your own eye as your reference it's there it's free okay and once you have that then you can move on to this inner circle Okay. And when you do the circle, it just barely touch the bot touches the bottom of the line here and it goes beyond. Okay? So that's your that that's just a guide, okay? So that's why just draw it lightly. Just, you know, you're just sketching out the basics. So once you have that, then you can move on to the next part, which is your small circle there okay so it will always be in the middle okay it won't be to the left to the right up or down in the middle of the circle okay so after that then we can move on to your eyeball inside okay so this circle it will end right here where the tear duct is and a little bit of edge here okay when you do this it will help you make sense of the eye you know you can already visualize that the eye is not flat that it's it's all circular okay so this will help you when you're shading later on so having all these lines ready and drawn lightly will really help you okay so this is the most basic that you start with and then you can um, draw any eye later on with much easier. Okay, so now let's move on to the sketchbook. So I hope you, you understood my process. Okay, some people prefer to go the other way around. They prefer to start with the eyeball. And then this, and then the smaller circle, and then the shape of the eye. Again, it's up to you. But the thing to remember is... This should end where the tear ducts start, 
and also at the edge. If you look at your eye, it's, it doesn't go all the way out there. This part will be shadowed later. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the pencil so I can show you how I would do it. Okay, so let me switch this to the photo now. Or let me just um, add the photo. Okay. All right. So now we have the photo here. So it's not too big. All right. Okay, so if you have any questions, just ask away. All right, don't be shy. Okay, let me put this to the side. Again, if you don't see things clearly, just let me know so I can adjust. Okay. Let me just adjust this. Okay, I think this is right. Okay, and now let me just zoom in some more. Okay, there we go. So let's start like what I showed earlier. So I'll first use an HB. Normally I would just use a 6B, but so you can see better. Okay, let me zoom in further. Okay, so let's start with the shape of the eye. So you can do a rough sketch of this, okay? You don't have to make it perfect yet. And then this eye curves like this and then goes up. So the upper line is longer, okay? When you draw eyes, don't make the lower line longer than your upper line. Okay, once I have that, okay, so I hope you can still see it. I'm really lightly sketching it. Okay, then I can move on to the circle. Okay, so take your time. Okay, circles are quite tricky. And you really need to take your time when you do this. Because sometimes um, if it's a little lopsided, it's really going to affect how your finished eye looks. So remember, barely touching the bottom line and going over the upper line, okay? So the eyeball should not be like a pure circle inside, okay? So it should go above. So again, keep going back and forth. See if maybe you're making your eyeball too, too big or not, okay? So while you're still sketching it lightly, you can still erase and you know make changes so that's the thing about drawing lightly okay don't press too hard so that it won't leave marks that you can no longer erase and will affect your shading later on okay so i'm adjusting a little bit the size just slightly okay so now that i have that I'm now going to find my center. So if it helps, you can draw a cross. If it helps you find the center. Okay, if you're not, you know, if you're not sure, then you can easily find it. Okay, so don't make this too small nor too big. Okay, I think that's the right size. Okay, now that I have that. I'm going to go and create my eyeball. So again, this is a circle. So take your time getting it right. Sometimes you're like, oh, it looks like an oval. So just go over it again and try to get the circle down. So this really requires patience, okay? If you feel like, oh, well, why do I have to go through all these steps? It will help you later on when you're shading. Things make uh, sense. Like, why is there a, sh uh, you know, a shadow here? Why should it be like that? Because that's how the eye is shaped. So having all these will really help you with your shading later on. Okay, so now that we have this, then we can now start shading. Okay, so what I do is... I start with um, the middle part, okay? So I, I darken this. So if you if you have um, your reference photo or if you're looking at your eye, um, 
in my case, I always like to already draw where the reflection is. I already, you know, um, sketch it out like so. And then, okay, darken your center. Your pupils. Okay, so this is really the darkest part. So that's why it's it's useful to have a, a 6B, 5B pencil because it can really create really dark um, shading. Okay, so try to keep that circle shape, okay? So take your time, go over it in layers. So that's the thing with shading. Don't go too dark unless it's like this and it's really dark because it's going to be much harder to erase later on. So just... Do it in layers. If you feel like one part needs darkening, go over it in layers. Just layer and layer until you get the right shade. Okay, so now that I have this, um, then I'm going to add the texture of the eye. Okay, in my case, my eye is really dark, so I would usually shade this a lot. But uh, based on a reference photo, it's... Um, it's a light colored eye, so you you create the texture. And this is not even, okay? So the texture shouldn't be even. It's very organic, it's very natural looking. So it shouldn't have even spacing, it shouldn't have even um, lines. Okay, sometimes I would actually go over it like this. Okay. If you're drawing bigger eyes, then you have to go into more detail. But if it's smaller, then it's not as um, hard to do. Okay, and now I'm going to go and shade the edges. So the thing about eyes is, depending on what you're drawing, what age, usually when you look at the baby's eyes, the edges are quite clear, quite crisp. But as people age, the edges become uh, blurry. So... Um, keep that in mind depending on what your what age person you're sketching is um, the edges will change okay so you don't need to make very crisp edges if it's not the eyes of the very young okay so in my case there's some edge but not very crisp so I'm just darkening it like so so remember, when you do it in layers, it will give you time to fix things, to make things right. Okay. So if you drew lightly, then you can easily erase your guidelines after. So in this case, this upper part is no longer needed. So I'm now going to erase it. And it's easily gone. And now I'm going to go over the line. Just to darken the line. So this is really in steps. Okay, this requires much patience. And much shading. So take your time. Okay, You're, it's not a contest. Okay, so when you shade this... This part is going to be more shadowed because of the lid than the other parts. Okay, so let's do that. Let's shade this part. And then let's fade it towards the center. So darkest here at the lid. And then shade in the shape of the lid. Don't shade it straight like that horizontal, but curved. If you follow the curves, it's going to look um, more natural. Okay. 
You can also do the one, um, one directional shading, um, but then you'll have to do it all over, everywhere. Okay, so this is what I mean when I said shade and layers. So I'm starting with the, the shade that I think is going right and take a step back, take a look at it. And if you feel like it needs darkening, then just go over it again. But at least if you work in, in layers and if you don't force it immediately, um, you will make less mistakes. And don't be afraid to shade darker. Sometimes people are afraid to to darken their values, and it it comes off as as flat. So I'm going to fix the circle a bit. I feel like it's it should be more circular there. So again, it helps if you keep looking at it from a distance because like now I don't think it's quite circular so I'm gonna fix while I still can this is the thing about working too closely so that's why it really it's really good idea to take breaks and to check your work from afar that way you can see it fully instead of um, closely okay I like this better Next, we're going to start shading the, the eye. So remember the section where there's um, highlight? That's the magic of the kneaded eraser. It's very, very easy to add little highlights as long as you didn't shade it too dark. Okay, so I'm going to go over that. And then... Start shading in a bit. Again, this depends on how dark or how light the eye of the person you're drawing is. So if it's darker, then it's going to be much easier. Light colored eyes will be more challenging, but will have more details. So. I'm just shading around the highlights. Remember the highlights? And now the edges of this your circle is not really a clean circle. There's some, um, if you can see here, there's some lines as well around the circle. So add little bits of lines here and there. Don't overdo it. Okay, again, it's always good to have a reference as your guide. Okay, and now that I have my lines, I can now shade better. So I'm just going to shade all over. Because it's not white, it's just a light color. So you can definitely add some shade. Again, this depends on the eye color. So if the eye is a deeper color, then you can shade more. And then you can scratch in darker lines to give contrast. And now that I have it, I can now even add more shading to the edges. So I'm going to make it darker. So work in layers. Take your time. So to get realistic, nice eyes, really it requires a lot of shading. So you need to pay attention to your model or to your reference photo or to your own eyes if you're using your own eyes. OK. 
Okay, clean the edges. Fix the shape as well. And uh, you can leave it for like that for now and then just go back to it later on. Okay, everything will come together when you've sort of shaded through everything. Then you can see the full picture and you can see where you need to add more or where you need to um, remove some. Okay, so when you shade, this is how I shade. I would start like so. And if I want it darker, then I just go over it again. Darker, again, and again, and again. So you build up your shading, okay? Instead of going dark right away and then realizing, oh, oops, it's too dark. Okay, so again, build up instead of... Um, making it too dark and having regrets. All right, so now I have my sort of eyeball. I have it, um, my irises, my pupil, okay? I can now go and shade outwards. So this same shading, I will continue. Okay, so instead of a line, okay, so that's the thing with eyes. People tend to do lines, lines, lines. The thing with eyes is, instead of a hard line you shade it to look like a line we don't really see hard lines in our on our faces if you if you keep on using hard lines it will really age the person um, very quickly so if you for example um, draw children um, try not to use any hard lines the only hard lines you will see are um, here in the eyes like this the nostrils very minimal so it's all shading so even here I'm not gonna draw the line like so I'm gonna shade it because if you look at even if you look at a reference photo you don't really see a hard line you see shadowing so you will you will do the same you will do shadowing okay you will do shading So I'm going to go here towards the tear duct and the shape is like so. And this is where the eyeball comes in because we did the eyeball then we know where, where it ends. It ends here. And so we know that we will shade on that part to create the shape of the tear duct. Okay, so the shade, uh, the shadow is darker here, becomes softer, and then slightly darkens again down here. Okay, so it's not one dark part. You have to pay attention to the, the nuances of the shadows, the shading, because it will make a really huge difference on your finished eye. And here at the very corner it's also shadowed so a bit here a bit here and slightly here and then you can shade it all over just a pale color okay and from here we will slowly fade Okay, so let's let's not end it too harshly. Let's slowly fade it in so that it's a soft curve instead of a harsh line. Because you know our eye wall is circular, so we should try to shade and make it look like there's a curve. Okay, now that we have that. The one thing that I really especially don't line is here as well, the lower lid, okay? Once you line that, it's really going to look very harsh. So again, I have a very, very pale line for the inner part. 
just very pale. And then I shade the outer part. You have to leave the space where um, you see the, the pinkish, whitish color. Okay, so that's very pale. So there's a very, very thin space. And you have to maintain that. And towards the tear duct, it will thin down and slowly sort of disappear. Okay? And then you will softly shade it again. Lashes will be the last thing. So we have to set everything up before we add the lashes. So again, don't draw hard lines. Instead, shade, shade it into a line so everything is soft and it will look like real skin. So that's how I draw eyes. I don't draw hard lines. And that's what makes them look more natural. Okay, before I continue, I'm just going to erase this part so it won't. Okay, remember this edge. Okay, so that's where your eyeball also ends. So it, it will have some shadow right there. Okay, so shadow, shadow, shadow. Again, no harsh lines. Shade it into a line. Hello. Thank you for joining. If you didn't catch the earlier part, um, you can watch the replay later. It will all be there. So this will be quite long, but I'm going through the entire process of how I draw my eyes okay and just like here remember the eyeball it's circular like this then you will also shade circular like edge because it's the eyeball is circular so you have to think about the eyeball that's why you created the eyeball because it's there to guide you on how you will shade the eyes okay it's like when you also paint um, eyes it's not white. You always stain it a little bit. Just a smidgen of, of yellow really makes a huge difference. A too white eye, it looks quite unnatural. Okay, so again, work in layers. Because you, you go all over, and then when you once you finish everything, then you can see better where you need to add more shading. Okay, and here I'm going to add just a little bit for the inner part. Again, not too harsh. So instead of one harsh line, I'm trying to shade it into a line. Okay, and then because you had your eyeball, it will also guide you on the shape of the, eye, the lid. Okay, so the lid, um, it's like a two, it's not one line here, it sort of forks into two lines, but not too harsh, okay? And you have to pay attention to the eye that you're trying to copy or trying to um, follow, how it folds, if, is it a thick fold, is it a thin fold, all, line, all different eyes have different kinds of folds. Okay, so this one is a little bit thicker from the start. And then becoming thinner. As it goes towards the side. 
Okay, so pay attention to the shape because um, it will really also affect how the finished eye looks. So that's why eyes are really the most important feature that you have to get right when you're creating portraits. Because, of course, when somebody commissions you to do a portrait, they want the finished work to look like them, right? And eyes are the number one thing that you have to really get right. Okay, so even the lid, I will not draw one harsh line. I will also shade it into a line. So everything is soft as how skin should be, right? We don't have scales or, you know, things like that. Our skin is soft. So we have to, we have to show that when we do our, our drawing, our shading. And one way to avoid um, making your skin look rough or old is to put too many lines, harsh lines. and I'm just going to add a bit more shadowing and then from here I'm going to extend it outwards okay so now you can shade it okay a mid mid shade So anything that's not white, you have to go over. You have to shade it. Okay, the only parts that you will not go over are the parts that are white, the highlights, and the inside of the eye, but not all over. You need to create the shadows still. Okay, and once you have that mid shade down, do, all, do it also for the top, just so you have a more finished eye later on. So here I'm shading um, in the shape of the eyelid. So like I mentioned earlier, work in layers. So start light and then you can slowly add. So now I'm going to add here because the lid is not flat. So I'm going to add sh more shading going from dark from the inside and then becoming light. Okay, so this is where you start refining everything. You start darkening parts that need to be darker because now since you're, you're almost you've almost shaded all over you can have more confidence about which which parts need to be darkened and then move in move towards the lid so it's like shadow from here and the shadow from the lid will slowly meet at the center So this gives the illusion that it's it has a soft curve. So shading will really solve everything. So you have to take your time with shading if you want realistic eyes. So again, from the crease going towards the middle, 
from darker to lighter and the same from here moving towards the crease but just softly okay now we add this edge here now I can darken it and add a darker shadow at the edge And then again, going from dark to light. And we also add a little bit of shadow here. Just a little bit. Not like here on the top. So this is where the kneaded eraser will really come in handy because you can easily, um, for example, lighten some parts like this by dabbing onto it. Or you can shape it into a pointed shape, um, tip and then remove certain parts like here, for example. I want to clean the edges. Okay, And here there's a sort of highlight, so I'm also going to do some lifting off here. So it's really very useful. Okay, so now it's just me fixing the top part of the eye, thickening this section because it's looking too thin earlier, and here as well. Keep in mind, this will be covered by the eyelashes too. So again, this upper portion is more shadowed because of the lid. So I'm going to add extra shadow. Except for the highlighted section where the light reflects on the shiny eyeball. Okay, and now um, I kind of have my shading here. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. because this is going towards the nose. So just a little bit more shadowing. And adding the crease, the forking fold. And then I'm gonna shade here where the eye bags are. <laughs> <laughs> the bane of my existence I have dark shadows all the time okay so that shape that with the eyeball that will be your guide so that's the the darker shadow over there going towards the edge okay so first I'm going to start with the mid shade like what I did on top So if you want to shade this finer, then you need to um, have finer strokes, finer shading of your pencil. But if you're not aiming for a very fine shading, then you can just do it like me. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the, the dark circle, the eye bag part. If you don't add this, the eye looks weird so you have to add this because this also shows you the the curve of the eyeball so that's why it's important to have the eyeball and to sketch it beforehand because it will guide you on the shape of your lid on top and also on the on the shadow below here it curves towards the edge of the eye so I'm gonna add that edge that soft edge Okay, so don't overdo the shadow. You don't want this to look like a black eye. Okay, you just need to add values to your eye so it looks real. So again, from here, darker and getting lighter as it 
goes towards the eye bag. And also shade under so it's not like a weird end here it doesn't look like a saddle thing so sh shade away slowly fade the shadow into a mid tone So the edge of the eye will have this darker section. But again, no hard lines. Everything mostly shading. I promise you, that's what makes the big difference between having a realistic eye and a cartoonish eye okay don't do hard lines unless you see a really hard line um, don't do one okay so I'm gonna shade this edge you know where it folds up towards the um, eyebrows again it has that soft curve so I'm going to add that but since we're just drawing eyes I'm going to stop right under where the eyebrow is so as you can see um, it's really um, a lot of patience a lot of you know um, slowly working towards your goal so you really need to take your time and take a step back every now and then check your reference is it your maybe your eyes or reference photo or your friend's eye keep checking so that um, you can see fully from a distance if uh, you're getting the proportions wrong or not when it comes to proportions you have to keep checking at a distance because um, working too closely it distorts things and you don't get to fully see until sometimes quite too late like me <clears throat> so later I'll find out how distorted this is but hopefully not so much okay so now I'm gonna add just slight shading here Again, to give the illusion that it's curving is how the eyeball is curved. So really, just practice your shading and you'll be able to do this. So actually shading is just a lot of having a lot of patience to keep on going over things slowly and building towards the the shade that you're looking for because you know you have to keep on working around and keep on adding slowly okay so i'm just going to shade this and then i'm going to lift off the highlights there, there are highlights around near the tear duct so first since it's not it's not a too dark shadow i can just lift it off with my kneaded eraser So I'm just going to point this to a tip and just lift off here at the edge, and here near the crease, and here as well below. Okay, so having the highlights here and there will also 
help you have a more realistic work. So really, a lot of shading. <laughs> Sorry to say, but <laughs> that's how you, you can make a, a realistic eye. But you know, you can do it. As you can see, I'm just really working towards the shade that I need, taking my time. So it's really going through steps, adding here and there. Okay, so to learn to have patience. If you're not confident shading, you can start with simple forms like spheres and boxes, your lamp, and then you can slowly improve your um, shading techniques. Okay, so this is um, the eye. Again, if the skin is darker or if, if the lighting is um, much more dramatic, then it will have more dramatic shadows. So that also depends on what kind of um, you know shadowing there is. So now, um, I'm just going to make this softer on top. And then we can add the lashes. Okay, so with the lashes, they're not all the same length, the same uh, thickness, and they're not evenly um, spaced apart. So um, try to, you know, um, make them more, they're, they're wild. You now they go, they don't go in just one direction like that. It will slowly move. So from the, from the outside, it will start like so. And then towards the middle, it will slowly straighten. And then right about here, it will start to curve on the towards the other direction. Okay, so you can start with little ones, just to get the general feel. And then you can fill it in. Okay, so this depends on how long a person's lashes are. Some people have really long lashes, some people have short lashes. Okay, so again, curving, curving, still curving towards here. And then right about here, it's going to start shifting and going towards the opposite direction. And as you move towards the inner part of the um, corner of the eye, it the lashes become sparser, thinner, and shorter. Okay, so it's not all one length. The longest are um, some from here to the edge, but really the middle part. So take a look at your eyes closely in the mirror and observe. So um, thicken the parts that need thickening. Again, different lengths, different thicknesses. So practice with your pencil, um, pressing, pressing, and then lifting press and then lift so that you can create the thin um, edge okay so press and lift press and lift okay so you can first practice it elsewhere so before you um, do it here so that um, you can get the hang of it you know the motion so here I'm adding thicker parts longer lashes so again, vary the length and thicknesses of your lashes and you're going to be good. Sometimes I have odd lashes, like some uh, suddenly one here is straight or suddenly one here is weird. So that's fine. That's, that's how our bodies are. It's not, they're not all the same. But having different thicknesses, different lengths, it's really going to help give your eye a more natural look. Not like you're wearing false, false lashes or something like that. Okay, so some parts thicker, some parts... And there you go. Suddenly the eye looks so much better with the lashes. Okay, so again, this depends on how thick a person's lashes are. Here, I'm just going to thicken the the base so don't overdo this you don't want your your eye to look like it has fake lashes on unless that's really what you're going for 
Okay, now I'm going to add extra shading. Because, of course, if there are lashes here, it's also going to add to the shadow. All right. Okay, and then for the ones below, it's the same idea from one direction and from the, the edge, the outer edge, longer, thicker, but compared to the lashes on top, the lashes on the bottom will be even sparser and um, even um, thinner. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And they don't start inside, they start here. So remember we, le we left this white section here, this very pale section, you start at the edge of that. Okay, so you curve. I'm going to add extra lashes here. Okay, so that they meet. So it starts curving like so. And here I'm basing this on my reference. So I'm starting off light, lightly. And then I can always add more. Again, curving in one direction. And then somewhere around here, it's going to straighten. And then going to start to curve in the opposite direction. Okay. So this will be a good time also to sharpen your pencil so that you will have those crisp lines, which you will need for the lashes. So some parts will have thicker lashes. You know, when you look at your eyes, sometimes <clears throat> some parts look a bit bald. That's fine too. That's, you know, very natural, very real. Maybe you rubbed your eyes too much and some of your lashes fell out, you know. So the thing is to not make it too even. Okay, and then I'm just going to add extra shadowing under. to help frame the eyes as well. So if you feel like, you know, once you've finished and your eyes are looking too light, you can always adjust your values. You can always darken the darks and then make everything darker. Okay, so I'm now finishing. Adding a bit more shadow here and there. Connecting these two parts. And fading away. So as you can see, shading is the key. As long as you got your basic shapes and guides down, everything will rest on shading. So you really have to um, keep on practicing. Okay, so it's not it's not magic, of course. It's really practice. If you keep practicing, you'll get progress and you'll get better. But if you like to draw people or if you want to draw people, then it's really good to practice a lot on the eyes because they are the most important feature that you need to draw when doing portraits. You have to get the right, the shape. Some eyes are, you know, um, going downwards. Some eyes turn up upwards at the edge. So. We, ha we all have different eyes and it makes a difference on a portrait that you're working on. If it's going to look like the person that it's supposed to look like after. Eyes really make a huge difference. Okay, so 
this is my eye <laughs> so i hope you learned i hope it looks uh, i like it it looks real um you can darken some parts if you want keep checking your reference photo so here this part is even darker so i can darken it even further create more contrast so if you feel like sometimes your work is too bland it probably just lacks contrast so you need to add um, contrast in your work dark shadows mid-tones highlights all of these if they're all present they really make for interesting um, artworks that's why in in an art studio you you have those really nice lighting the really the lamp you know where they shine it on the model and such so that they you can really get beautiful um shadows and highlights okay so um, this is my eye <laughs> i hope you learned from me okay so again just to recap we started with um drawing the shape of the eye okay so we start with drawing the shape of the eye and then we added the circle and it goes outside and it touches just here and it goes out and then we add the pupil and then we add the eyeball why do we need to add the eyeball this will help you later with the shading of your dark circles <laughs> no, it's not dark it's the, it's actually because you have your eyeball so it it naturally dips and forms in that section as well as the eyelid on top okay so everything is um everything that you prepare beforehand will really help when you shape your eye later on your eyeball also helps you see where the tear ducts are and where the edge of the eye is so the the space in the tear ducts it's it's much bigger than here here it's just really the tip but it will help you with the shadowing because remember this is a circle so it it should also you know your shading should also reflect that it's a circular object so that's why it's good to have these down so that it, you have it in mind okay so this is my eye so i hope um you learn from it um this is a light colored eye so i'm still gonna keep looking at it and i'm still gonna add here and there if i feel like it so um i hope you learned to draw the eye and if you do um please uh, share your work in the group i would love to see your um, finished eye okay so i'm gonna pop this back to my face now and zoom out because this is like super zoom okay so thank you everyone for joining it's quite a long one but it's really it's really um, a long one because it i have to go through the step by step but i rather show you everything so you can actually see um how to create the eye how i make my eyes so again my one tip is really um, not to draw hard lines if you don't see it okay so if you don't see a really hard line then it means you have to shade that line to look like a line so you will have a softer look a softer line that is actually more appropriate if you're drawing skin because skin is soft remember okay so thank you for joining me and um, i hope you try it out and um, if you miss some parts, just watch the replay. It's quite long, so I hope you have the patience to stick it out. And good luck on your eye drawing. So bye, everyone. <laughs>